And then I heard that there was a new franchisee coming and I'm like, yeah, and I've just started. Like, I can't share the leads. And I did my research. I'm like, okay, so there's this new guy that's just started. I called him, spoke to him and then checked my leads. And I'm like, I think my gym's leaders are half. So now I'm angry about that as well because we sort of share it. So we don't share a territory. We have our own territories, but guess what? I called Dan about it and emailed Jim. And this was probably the unfair email that I sent through. Maybe two days later, I had a four and a half thousand dollar landscaping job approved. And then I was like, oh yes, like, great. Funny story is that I actually given that guy at work because I was too busy. So Mitch, thank you very much today for joining us on the Jim's Marling and the Jim's Group podcast as well. Now you reached out to, um, I think it was, was it via Dan about how you're going in your first two months? And then Jim basically said, you know, let's interview this man and to find out how he's been going in the first two months of being a franchisee. So maybe do you want to talk about that email and what you said in it and about how you've been going so oh, far? So there was two separate occasions. Yep. So after about four or five weeks in, I got an email from Jim asking how I was going. And guess what? I wasn't going well that day. <laughs> so um, Jim heard about how well I wasn't doing. But that had like that's from all different avenues, not just business, et cetera. But I think it just gave me someone to direct all of that energy at. Uh, poor Jim caught the brunt of that. And then about two weeks later, I was actually listening to a podcast where Dan was getting interviewed uh, on the Lawn Stars. And I thought, like, I was feeling positive, like, such a profitable week. It was scheduled so well. Um, it was it was just a really, really good week. And I was listening to Dan. I could feel all that positive energy of his. And I'm just, I'm just going hard. I was going to knock off early on a Friday, and things were just going smooth. So I thought, okay, I'm going to put down, take the podcast, podcast off, write a little text message to Dan, apologize for probably saying some not so good things uh, about him about gyms, et cetera, to Jim and just get a hold of him and say, like, actually, thank you, basically. And then he called me straight away. He's like, mate, that's okay. That's what we're here for, et cetera. He's obviously got broad shoulders. Like, it's probably like once a week at least that I speak to him or even Don. Sometimes I speak yeah. to Don two or three times a week, which is- That's like, Don Handibo, yeah? Don Handibo. Don Handibo. I was just on the phone to him uh, about half an hour ago with an issue and he solved it. Even last week, like I was speaking to Don at like 9.30 at night or something. And that was about like selecting ride-ons, et cetera. Like, what am I going to do? And he's messaged me until like 10.30 at night or something. So yeah. Anyway, I just had to reach out and apologize and say, nah, all good, Dan. But he's, like I said, he's got broad shoulders. He's done all this before. He knows what I'm going through. And um, yeah, it's pretty good. No, well, this is a great to talk to someone like yourself, Mitch, because obviously, you know, when you do the podcast, people go, oh, you're only picking the best franchisees in regards to only putting stuff that is good. So it's great to hear that you've had the realities of business almost in a way. It's not all smooth sailing, as we know, but there's ups and downs. And I know that from talking to a lot of franchisees as well. And thank you for sharing that. And that's really honest to hear. So I want to talk about then a little bit, take you a bit back to your journey. What were you doing prior to Jim's mind before coming into the franchise? Yeah. So before going to Jim's, I was working probably the the closest amount of work that I was doing was mining and earthworks. So that was for probably about a four-year period prior to gyms. Uh, I'm 33 now. So prior to that, in my mid-20s to late-20s, was farming, agricultural. Okay. Prior to that, we're talking like retail management, hospitality management. So sort of three different fields. And what prompted the change for you then? Uh, I was always going into business. So I had a plan to go into business. I'd been following gyms on, I think, not YouTube, but Facebook. People all, I just had no intent on going with gyms. I hate mowing. Uh, <laughs> I had no intent. I was actually looking at another franchise model and I wanted to get into diggers and excavators, bobcats, uh, all that like real tight access earth moving equipment. And I'll tell you what, I could use that now as well. That's what I wanted to go in with. And I'd organized to have a meeting with these people. Like I had money, like I was ready to move. I'm ready to go into a business. And the discovery call that I had with them, I had it booked at like 10 o'clock in the morning or something. And it got to about 10.30 and I'm sitting there like nervous as all, whatever, uh, pretty similar to get on this this call actually. And um, waiting and waiting. And I'm sitting there for half an hour waiting for these guys to get contact with me and they didn't call. So I called, I called the guy who was meant to... to had this Zoom meeting with me and he said, oh, sorry, I forgot about you. And then he proceeded to like speak about how to get into the franchise stuff. And it was at, which is not gyms, it's a percentage. So he was going to take a percentage of the profit and I had to buy all of the equipment through him. I couldn't buy or through their their business. I couldn't buy it 
so, and they made me sign an agreement to say they wouldn't talk about it, but I hadn't said a brand name, so whatever. <laughs> and um, I had to buy it all through them, and it was a percentage. So for me to actually get to profitable, I was like, I'm going to need like six or seven forty thousand dollar machines. But then every time I buy a machine, they're going to, and the cost of it was more than jibs. So I got off that phone call and I had uh, off that Zoom and I had a missed call from someone and it was Dan Cahill. So I forgot about it. I wanted to know a little bit more about franchise and I thought, oh, I'm just going to message this gyms group or whatever and just have a conversation with them to find out and sort of pick their brain and then go back to the company, like, like the work that I wanted to do. And so I called him back and it was Dan. And if anyone knows Dan, he's a bloody good salesman. So within about 45 minutes, he'd sold me a gyms mowing. I've got cyanitis, a deviated septum. I was getting x-rays on my face. Was, I hated mowing. Every time I mowed my backyard, I was just all clogged up. And actually, after the training, I've had that fixed. So they put me on some medication and stuff like that. And cyanitis, is, it's not affecting me at all. But um, yeah, that's sort of how I got into the, the franchise. And after the training as well, like, I did, like again, I didn't want to do mowing. But once I sat through the training, all that agricultural stuff, that came out. And I was like, hang on, I've got a passion for this. And then I got back to when I was in hospitality and retail. Hang on, I can do this. Like, I, I think I'm going to enjoy this. And I had, like, it's crazy. Like, when I go and talk to customers, I was just at a customer's place quoting some hedges. And I noticed their citrus tree. And she's pruned it really, really well. And I pruned over 20,000 citrus trees. So I know this. And I was like, oh, you've done this well, this well, this well. And this is, and she said, I don't know what I was doing. I said, this is why you've done it. And that's why it's good. No, that's great. I thought I was going to say to you, because um, people don't realize sometimes they might think Jim's mowing and that's just mowing, but it's it's just a vehicle in and they've got all this unserviced work. You can take cross-divisional leads. If you ever want to do the digger stuff, you can take cross-divisional leads if they're available. There's so many things. It's just, it doesn't matter if you're coming as cleaning, dog wash, whatever. You can do a lot of things outside of that. It's just the entry point to get in. So I was cleaning windows this morning. Oh, really? Okay. There you go. Because I know a few franchisees in cleaning, for example, there's a guy called Phil who's doing this sales thing this weekend, but he um has a cleaning franchise, but he's pretty much the point for the household. So if they need to skip in, he's organizing. If they need trees done, he's organizing it and doing his clipping stuff. So there's just so many things you can do with, with gyms. So what did Dan say in the 45 minutes that got you to change your mind? Um, So he sparked, he started talking like, I think the initial thing that's what he said was, what do you know about franchises? And I was a supervisor or a shift leader and and went into um, a little bit of like the store management site of an Eagle Boys pizzeria when I was younger. And I did all of that in about two, two and a half years. So I saw it, the store open, and then I saw it, saw it get to the point where Tom Potter ran his franchise company into the ground, basically. I wasn't working with Tom Potter, but he was the, the head of, um, he's the one that created Eagle Boys, essentially. I think he's got a book out there about franchising and, and how hard it can be. But um, yeah, that was what I knew about it. But then we basically spoke about like marketing and customer service and that type of thing. I don't think we touched on Maui. So, because I was ready to move on business at the time, I wasn't quite sure what I was ready to move on. But we spoke about, yeah, the business side, the customer service side and how things would work for me. And how did you find then the, the training itself? So you're coming in here, um, mowing might not have been something you wanted to, but how did you find that training experience overall coming I down? Used, I use something that you told me you're training all the time. Cool. What was that? Oh, you do? Good. What do you use it for? Yeah. So you you told us to um to get it on our phones and use it for like emails and professional mm-hmm. things, basically. But I use it for my ads and stuff as well on social media. I think yeah. right, you connected your phone up and showed us yeah. the big screen. Um, how to do it and whatnot. And I, I would have never thought of that. So that's a real good one. And then I've always, actually from my first lead, and I shouldn't say it. So before I started with gyms, or like three days before, it was the Friday or the Saturday, I was starting on the Monday. And I started to panic. I was like, I won't work. I've got no one booked in. What am I going to do? So I went out to do letterbox drops. So I had magnets and I started letterbox. I feel I'm not that confident of a person. I'm going to go to like an outer suburb. Basically, it's in the sticks. It's not even in Dubbo where I am. So I went out there and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do letterbox drops. Turns out they've only got PO boxes out there. So I thought I I was throwing magnets over people's fences because everyone's got dogs and whatnot. So I was throwing the magnets over people's fences. And because they're all like two acre blocks and the town's got about 300 houses, roughly, it was like a lot of walking, but not much return. But yeah, I ended up throwing one over. 
And then I moved to the next little country town over and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go do that. But someone called me straight away from the magnet that I threw oh, out. <laughs> and it was like, it was overgrown. It was terrible. But I wasn't wearing gyms. Yeah. And then straight in the back of my head was John Wilde saying, you know, a quoting shirt. But when he said, you need a quoting shirt, I was like, what? What is that? He rambled on about it for like ages and it, it never clicked. He's like, you need a quoting shirt in your car at all times. You need a quoting shirt. What do you mean? So I've got to go do this quote. I don't want to drive the 30 minutes back to Dubbo. So I actually went there without a uniform on. We're going on the survey though. So I was like, right, before, before he starts, there's no survey to the customer. <laughs> I probably, I didn't tell Ben that one, but you uh, know, I panicked on the way there too. I was like, yeah, I'm going to quote this. It's two acres. It's overgrown. They want pruning, mowing, everything. Yeah. I've got idea what I'm doing. So I'm calling Dan. I couldn't get a hold of Dan. And I'm on my way back there, I'm halfway there because you have to quote straight away. It was what I was told. So I'm like, I'm not going to leave any time here. I'm just going to get back there, quote this job. So I was trying to get to Dan. Then I was trying to call Dan's wife. I was like, she knows more than me about Jim's mowing. Like maybe she's never been out and quoted, but she knows more than me. Like, help me, help me, help me. And eventually Dan called me and um, took me through the process, showed me a couple of formulas and stuff. I went there. Bumbled my way through it. I didn't tell her that she was my first client ever. And I'm saying, when you send the invoice, it said invoice number one. Yeah. Uh, true. Very true. Very true. And um, so I went through the whole process, jumped back in the, jumped back in the year, drove around the corner and pulled up and said, oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to call Dan. But just before I called Dan, someone walked over to me and said, are you a Jim's knowing? <laughs> He started talking to me about quote his lawn. Oh no, what am I going to do? He's a regular now too, that guy. That's great. He came to my son's birthday party as well about four weeks later, bought balloons and stuff. So first birthday, which is really cool. And how'd you go with the actual quote, the first one? Did you end up winning that quote or? Oh, I won it. Yeah. And I got and I made good money too. So when Dan told me the price, like for the- Did you use his formula, did you? Because there's a bit of- Sometimes Dan's formula, you know, is different kind of dollar bit. So you use Dan's formula for that one. Mate, well, he told me what to quote. I went, <laughs> like, I would, I would tell you to get lost. I would tell you where to, where to put it. So I uh, did quote what Dan told me to do and it got approved. And then I texted him straight back and I was like, mate, I had no idea what to do. I didn't realize that you could make that money. It was something like $580. Wow. And it took me six maybe six hours pretty yeah. good yeah, yeah. So like that was and, and the, the client was really happy it was a once-off like they had they had their own mower and stuff like that the yeah the son that normally did it he was busy so they just that's it but look in your life that's a but, but it's a great confidence booster to have that so early or have that as your first and before you even start on the system you get that from a you know well that taught me that the magnets work <laughs> right, but I think that was the friday yeah. So by Monday, I'd handed out about 1,500 magnets and blistered my feet. So, and then I was back on the Monday to mow this six hour lawn. Oh, my. Blistered my feet more. So I'd blistered feet for about two weeks. Oh, no. <laughs> Definitely paying your dues. But I was going to say then, Mitch, how was, the, how was the first month then? So, how was this period of the first month when um, yes. I was feeling. Yeah. So maybe just let's go into that because this is a really great thing to talk about because. Obviously, you know, when you're in a big company, you think, you know, day one, you're going to be doing this and you're going to be flying, but it's a small business. Businesses take time sometimes. There's ups and downs. There's peaks and troughs. So let's talk about that from the start, um, about what happened in that first month. Oh, well, it, it was probably five weeks it took. Five weeks. Step one. The business to be a business. Like, was it more, like, what, well, was there some sort of, what was the setback that really got you, let's say, worked up? Was there some sort of setback? Was it leads or was it something to do with a customer or what what happened with that yeah, first month the leads were pretty difficult i actually got pretty irate about the whole gyms thing because i hadn't i generated more work than what gyms could for mm. so i was doing pretty well now when i look back but um i was i'm averaging about 5.2 leads a week from gyms to not be accurate but yeah 5.2 and um that's not quite enough for me to grow a business so i was going down all these other avenues obviously i love the the magnet, I actually, and I don't know whether we're allowed to do this, but I did it. I jumped on High Pages, Airtasker, Gumtree. No, you can do that. And they're terrible avenues. They are. <laughs> we don't want you to, but you can do it if you want. I think I've gotten one job off High Pages, seven 
leads I've taken off there and the customer doesn't respond. So I know I'm playing gyms here, but, and then I got one from Airtasker, which I got done today, which is perfect. So I got the lead today and won that one today. Cool. And I'll be doing that on Monday, which is great. And one job off Gumtree. So if I wasn't like, I'm saying I might have a 5.2 leads a week to start my business. But imagine if I started with three leads in, what is it? Nine weeks now. Like that's pretty unacceptable. So yeah, I was, I was, it was really hard. So it was up and down. Sometimes I'd message Dan and be like, mate, like I'm doing really good. Thank you. And then like for him, a week later, I message him go, where's my work? So what kept you around then? So, well, it's accountability, I guess. Yeah. So it's something to, I've been listening to a few podcasts. And they do, a lot of podcasts talk gyms up. That's good. <laughs> But then, like the mowing ones, yeah. Which ones? Well, which ones do you listen to? In the mowing ones, it's the um. Yeah, so lawn starts, which is Gary. lawn starts. Yeah, Gary's cool. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, that's he's interviewed Dan on there. So if anyone yeah. wants to listen to Dan's story on there, it's actually pretty. That's that's a really good story. And then there's the skull sessions guys. Yeah, Catch Pro. Catch yeah, Pro. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're they're really good. And then Don's given me some YouTube guy to listen to. Who's like his business mentor? Uh, which one's that? Don't like Andy's? Okay. No, I'm not, no. So he's not like a, um, I don't think he's a Boeing guy, but I've listened to okay. him like Andy's before yeah. I started because that just pumped me up. So. And Mike's a legend, mate. We've got some videos online with Mike Andy's. I don't know if you've seen them, but we had okay. it here. I watched, I watched all of them. I listened oh, to good. the podcast. So oh, cool. I did all of that before starting Jibs. So like once I knew that I'd signed up, I listened to like all your podcasts, went through all the YouTube. So like when I went to the training session, it was like, oh, there's job, job. I nearly said hello to you, like, because shit, I <laughs> felt like, no, like, hello, like a mate, because I felt like, because I've been watching you in the shower, me in the shower, watching you on YouTube, <laughs> for like two, two or three weeks prior to going to training. So, well, I'm, well, hopefully, well, I'm glad you did all that research because we 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 like people to do research on us, and like, I'll give you an example, like that other franchise you probably went to. I don't know how much information was online, but for us, you know, you can consume all this content in the hope that when you come to training. Or if you do, if you're a bit unnervous, it's just there to make your mind a bit easy because we want to try and share real stories with franchisees. They're not edited in any way. We just have the one from start to finish like we're going to do for you. We don't cut anything out just so that people can just hear genuine small business owners like yourself and Dan and all these other people, dog wash cleaning, whatever, and that, just to hear that journey, you know, and, and we try and keep in there things that are like the stuff you're saying, let's say, you know, that, you know, didn't nearly want to leave and stuff. Most other franchises or just brands would cut that out right we're going to keep that in there because i think it's really really important um to have that transparency because it's not we know we don't want to see everyone to come into the business think it's going to be easy because if you come with that it's going to be an easy mentality you're not going to do that thing what you said when you did in 1500 magnets and you did all that hard hard graph we don't want people to yeah if i was independent i wouldn't have done the whole magnet thing i think i would have just packed my bags and that would have been like yeah. I'm, I'm done like this got this got hard really quick i'm done I, I've received a phone call at least maybe say seven times since I started this with job offers. Um, and oh, we're, really? Yeah, we're talking one hundred eighty thousand, two hundred dollar, uh, two hundred thousand dollar job. It's great money, FIFO sort of stuff, or yeah. So some FIFO, some like foreman or like um, that type of like supervising work and that sort of stuff in construction and then, yeah. Have you been tempted? No, no, no. So let's go back to this time though when you were struggling. So you've you've gone and you've given down a clip about the leads and stuff what's he come back to you then or what sort of got you re-motivated then so you've gone i need more work or whatever what sort of stuff did you then do to sort of push yourself forward and keep going how'd you keep, how'd you do that um i don't know i think he's just really passionate and it's same with dot so donna dan's like super passionate and i think it's more like i just needed someone to vent to yeah well you do that in, absolutely in, in business you do they should probably have like some sort of psychological degree or <laughs> Most franchises also have to be counselors as well, for sure. Yeah, like I don't know whether you guys give them any sort of training in in that department, but they surely need it. Like <laughs> what stuff that I like. So Don called me, and I just had a conversation with the uh, with someone in, in the street. This is about my fourth week. Uh, so it's probably a nice little set off point for me. So about four weeks in our house, not the house that we live in. But our house that we rent out had been broken into three times and uh, they'd stolen the car. So we were replacing windows and doors and trying to deal with the tenants and things like that. So already having a really great week. 
Then someone had told me that the franchisee that went out with me had quit. And that's just someone on the street telling me that. Probably prematurely told me that as well. And he'd be tarnishing the brand anyway. But um, so I'd heard that. And then I heard that there was a new franchisee coming. And I'm like, yeah, and I've just started. Like, I can't share the leads. Funny story is I've actually given that guy at work because I was too busy. That's great. Great to hear. Okay, so that's, the, that's a natural reaction. Such a natural reaction when that happens. Yeah. So, and just building a rapport with that guy. I call that guy all the time too. Uh, that's Heath. Heath out of mine. So if he's listening, shout out to you. <laughs> so he's just started Heath as well last month, has he? I think Heath started maybe three or four weeks after me. And I, and I did my research. I'm like, okay, so there's this new guy that's just started. I called him, spoke to him, and then checked my leads. And I'm like, I think my gym's leads are half. So now I'm angry about that as well because we um, we sort of share it. At, so we don't share a territory. We have our own territories, but the majority of the work comes from vacant territory. So I only have like 80 houses in my territory. That's it. And it's it, it's bushland. So yeah. I actually haven't done a job in my territory or had a lead from my territory. I haven't dropped any magnets in my territory. <laughs> but um, I work in the vacant area of Dubbo. So the new guy had started and he's in Narramine, which is half an hour away. And he was also taking some of the leads from the vacant area in Dubbo. But guess what? I, I called Dan about it. Maybe Don, anyway, and, and emailed Jim, and this was probably the unfair email that I sent through. And I think I took accountability a little bit. I was like, man, like, you need to take some accountability for this stuff and just like shake it off and just get out there and um, get yourself leads. And then maybe two days later, I had a four and a half thousand dollar landscaping job approved. And then I was like, oh, yes, like, great, some wiggle room. I can knock that job out in two days. Um, the costing of it was, it came in a lot lower because we've got, obviously got the gym's pricing at Bunnings. I had to get some stuff from Bunnings and then we've got contractor pricing in town too at the local landscaping place. So the price came down. So that boosted my hourly rate on that job as well. But it's amazing yeah, how it, it can happen that, that quick. And it, it did like the transition from making 700 to about 1500 per week into that. Three thousand to six thousand dollar bracket, it happened in, in a week. Amazing how quickly things can turn. Yeah, but it was a change of attitude as well. I think. So with um where you're at the moment, so how many customers do you have currently? Are you happy with what you're making, or what's what's your plan then? Maybe you've only been going since end of August, so pretty much literally two month anniversary will be tomorrow. I think twenty twenty eighth you started. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm just finished my ninth week. So. What, what, how many do you have? Do you, are you getting like landscaping jobs more? Are you doing reg, reg customer most? Like, what's your sort of work you're doing in your business at the moment? Uh, there seems to be a lot of hedging. Hedging? No one hedges. So, like, they don't even mulch the mullman. The in, like, a lot of the independent guys, I just say, yeah. a lot of the independent guys or cowboys or whatever you want to call them. We've got to be careful with the independents because they watch our stuff and they leave a lot of, they can leave some nasty comments and it can blow up. So, no, I'm so I mean, an independent and a cowboy are different. But I'll tell you a story about a cowboy, actually. I followed a cowboy's work last week twice. So I'd gotten a, gotten a lead from Jim's. I went to the place to, to, to mow it. And she said, oh, our citrus tree's been pruned by the guy who was mowing. I said, oh, who is it? And she told me his name. And I went, oh, that's the $40 mow guy from Facebook. So any lawn for 40 bucks. Oh, I'm thinking about subbing him out, you know. So I keep pruning this tree. And so a citrus tree... It's grafted, so the root ball's different to the top of the tree. So the root ball's like a, we'll just call it a bush lemon, and it's got spikes on it. They're like two or three inch spikes. So he'd actually shaped or, or used the, the root ball as the tree. And she said, look, for the last couple of years, I've been getting lemons instead of mandarins, and it's got covered in spikes, and he's got a horticultural certificate. And, and this is the week that the muddy boots thing come out, right? Yeah. Saying that we don't know anything. And this yeah. has got a horticultural ticket, splashes around on Facebook, he's forty dollar nose. And I went, Oh <laughs> mate. Like so I've had to absolutely guts her tree out. I told her what I was gonna do and explain, you know, how we're gonna get this tree back, uh, what like a fertilizing plan for it might look like, all that sort of stuff. So we did it and she was like super satisfied with the job. And then the next job, I was on that the the big landscaping job and I was chucking I'd bought five cubes of mulch and I'm chucking it wheelbarrow on it and chucking it into the garden bed 
and probably making a bit too much noise on the, the back fence. Lady pops her head over and said, oh, I was just making sure that, you know, there wasn't a thief in here. Uh, we know the owners. I said, yeah, no worries. Got, got, had a yarn with her and she said, oh, look, we got this man who comes around and mows our lawn for $40. You know, you're beauty. And I said, well, yeah, yeah, great. She said, I think he might have killed our lawn. Okay, what's, what's he done? And she said, oh, we got him to spray for broadleaf weeds. And I said, oh, do you know what he uses? Because we got taught to use like bow and arrow. And that's what I, I went out and purchased because that's what we, oh, I'm going to give you the plug here. That's what we got told to buy at training was bow and arrow. So I bought the stuff and had it delivered to me and that's what I've been using. And I said, do you know the chance like what your lawn is? And she said, oh, it's buffalo. I said, do you know what chemical he used? She's like, die, die, die. And I said, dicamba, the stuff they use in the cotton, is it? She said, yeah, it was dicamba. I said, oh, let me come around and have a look at the lawn. She was on the corner. So I walked around, had a look at it and the things, it's it's busted. So now she's used the cowboy and she's the unfilaying you to her. So yeah, that's... Ugh. And I'd, I'd just been listening to the money. It's, no, was, it's pretty funny because I had some random guy on LinkedIn send that to me. I listened to it and I said, oh, I'm going to give it to Jim and Jim and John and Matt who are our trainers and see what their reaction is. And then we put that up and it's been shared around and a few of the, the groups and stuff, which is quite funny. And Jim was obviously pretty animated about it and blown up. But I think I think the great point about what you just said, Denny, is obviously you've done the mowing component of our training. And yes, it is only a three-day component, but you've got, you just said earlier, you've done 20 hours worth of pruning in previous life, you know what I mean? 20, uh, 20, 20 yeah. thousand, sorry. Uh, 20, just citrus. Just citrus. So this is what I'm trying to get a point at. Someone, you're coming to our training, but you've got 20,000 hours of citrus pruning experience. Like, you know what I mean? And then you do the training, then you're out in the field. So the Muddy Boots whole thing, the thing that annoyed us was there's, you know, 2,000 Jim's mowing franchisees and people different at different backgrounds. Some guys come from the comport, corporate office and, you know, then they in training, but you've got guys who are like professional green keepers for 15 years or landscapers for 10 years and then coming in. So yeah, it was quite, you know, I got worked up personally because I know how our training is and to say our guys were um, not trained and people just rock up and pay Jim an exorbitant fee for the franchise when you compare it to other franchises, which I know how much they cost. Um, now, on, on the fee thing, like people are using, what is it like service mate? Like, and they're probably, they're probably really good, but things like service mate and all this sort of stuff, but we get that Jim's jobs. And that's yeah. been that's been so good. So I email, when I emailed almost apologetically to Jim, I said to him as well, like if you're gonna if you want to keep me around, the Jim's job's what's gonna keep me there. Like no, great. Liza probably paying two hundred and fifty, three hundred for this sort of software, and we get it as part of their. Can I say your fees? Can I say? Yeah, yeah of course you can say I fees. Think, anything goes to close as much as you want. I think they're about seven hundred and ninety or eight hundred bucks. I've yep. lost I've lost track of money. I sat there and told John Wilds that I was going to calculate every cost, mate, and I've got no blood. <laughs> and he said, I can't wait to call you in about three or four weeks. <laughs> yeah, because John, 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 John doesn't tell anyone. He's Jody, who's Jody, who's in his business, his wife that runs his business, and she would know all that sort of stuff. So, a lot of team yeah, effort online, guys. My wife sat in over there. So, <laughs> a lot of team effort. But there's like a component in Jim's jobs where you can put your cost in. Yep. We, didn't, we didn't discover this until about six weeks in. So, you can enter in your costs. And it calculates your revenue and gives you your profit, profit margin. So anyway, I yes, that's right. I emailed Jim and I said, look, here's a couple of things that I would look at improving in Jim's jobs. And he told me what he was already working on for the Jim's jobs. And I basically said, like, that's what would keep me around. But even if you add like our insurances and all that stuff, if you went independent, like your insurance, it'd be similar in price, I guess. Maybe a little bit more, but we got Jim's, Jim's insurance. I've got Jim's bookkeeping as well. Um, they've just done my first bass. It's, um, oh, that's that, good. You've done your first bass. That's great. We've just gotten it back, and I think the wife is a bit unhappy with how they did it. She's telling them how to fix it. So <laughs> I don't know how that's going to go. But <laughs> And the other one is, like, I think Dan pumps a lot of our marketing fee into Google Ads. Yeah, they do a lot of Google. We do a lot of Google Ads, yeah. Yeah, so I think a lot of our – and that's part of our franchise fee, fee as well. Now, if we were to create our own website and pay Google fees and then have to try and find like a, a gym's job type app, like it's all possible when the amount of research you'd have to do, but I think the outlay of money per month would be higher. And then to get leads too. So I mentioned high pages and I don't want to bag them out, but like I pay the minimum fee of high pages, which is $29 because there's apparently no leads in the area. But I would, I wanted to add it to have a little look at how they do that, um, and I think some people are paying two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, 
Like we just pay the eight hundred, and that's what we get. We just get everything. Yeah, we do nothing. So, I yeah, get, no, it's- I get focused on just do- the doing. Yeah, well, that's what we want you to. Do. We don't want you worrying about all that other stuff. But I think what well, you said some great points, and Jim will be wrapped to hear about Jim's jobs because Jim's jobs is quite often a contentious thing. But people, I've been out in the field here for videos and stuff, and a lot of the guys love using it on their have it on their dashboard. Just you know, when they finish the job, bang, swipe across, and away they go, and they love the app and. You know, it's a real big passion area for Jimmy. Spend a fortune on that app, and it's gonna. He's keeping to spend a fortune on it. So, it's a, everyone, everyone who watches this, who knows that Jim's jobs. Yeah, you know, some people love a hate relationship, but um, I'm glad to hear you like using it because it is a program which is really unique. And he spent an absolute fortune, and he's gonna keep spending a fortune in that in that software to make it better. And those suggestions, I'm glad you flicked him through some suggestions because he's always open for that sort of stuff. So keep sending him through, and I'm glad to hear you actually emailed and. Have you called Jim as well, or you've just you've just emailed him? No, nah, just a just an email. Cool, uh, a couple of emails. So I emailed him on a Friday night, and he got back to me at like ten thirty on the Friday night. Yeah, and I think yeah. I emailed him at six o'clock Sunday morning. Yeah, I think he must have got back to me at about seven. Yeah, so he works in his little spurts. Yes, yeah. I reckon he might be on that chat GBT or something. I reckon it's got to be uh, a. Nah, he's definitely all the hours like that. I'll make a joke here. If he was on ChatGPT, you get an email that's more than one sentence back. Here, you get something that's actually a paragraph. But Jim, Jim, people don't know Jim email is very short. So Jim's very short because he gets a lot of emails. He has to go one-liners or you know a couple of lines at a time. But um, you know he doesn't use ChatGPT yet. But he's um, yeah, he works in spurts. So like you know every every four or five hours, you know he'll do like two hours of just bang, 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 and clear his inbox and come back again and away he goes. But yeah, he gets right back to you straight away if you email him. So yeah, on that I've actually got so. I think you asked me what my business looked like and I've got 31, 31 regulars now, which is apparently pretty good. And even just like replying or messaging to my 31 regulars and leads is crazy. And Jim does it to like 4,000 franchisees. Oh, oh 5,200 now. We've got a, yeah, there's a few. Oh, whatever it is. Yeah. I, just, I just tell people it's 10 million or something like that. <laughs> he would wish for that. But I was going to say, yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, but that's what I was going to say. So in your business sense, so how do your systems work? Are you basically, how are you managing it? Client communication, how are you managing, obviously using Jim's jobs, which is great. Jim's jobs. So it tells me where and when I should be. If I've got a regular client, I just book them in a month or two, two months in advance. So I've got yep. my calendar. So I already know what my earnings are going to look like next month because I can just go into the calendar and say, these are my regulars. And I think... It's about seven or eight hundred dollars per week off regulars, roughly, just off the top of my head. That is, but that that's what it looks like. And then obviously we pick up the work throughout the week, uh, which buffs that up. Like even at the start of today, I think I was looking at about seven hundred dollars for next week. At the end of today, I've had numerous quotes accepted or whatever, and like next week's booked out. And even my last quote, I was like, yeah, I can't get to you until the week after now because I've got. I'm completely booked, so it's not seven hundred dollars anymore. It's much better than that. That's great. And I was going to say is now, how's so? How's the overall? Was it a lifestyle reason for you doing? Or you said you wanted to always do a business, but you didn't like you had a passion in another area. But for you, was it? What's what's what are the benefits of running a business? Is it just more freedom for you, or what are you finding as being the most beneficial thing to you? When I was in mining, I was on night shift, and that was disgusting. Two days, a pajama day, two nights. And then often you might back like another one or two nights onto that overtime and then you got two days off. But you lose the first day coming off night shift. So really you've only got one day off. And I've got a son who's about, he's 13 months old now, just over just over a year old. And like I wake up in the morning, you know, instead of, I've, I've been doing earthworks recently and I'd wake up at four o'clock in the morning and I was at home at about 8 p.m. a.m. to 8 p.m. And that was 10 to 12 days on with one or two days off. So I was going to miss any, I was just going to miss heaps. But now I wake up, I can give him a quick cuddle. And actually this week I've been up at five o'clock every morning, but there's no rush. Like if I can't get out the door in time, it's okay. My schedule, I can move around. It's whatever. But you know, I can get cuddle in the morning. I can have breakfast with my wife and then, and take off. And then I'm home. I'm probably pushing myself a little bit more than some, but I'm home around that 6 p.m. mark. Okay, big day. Yep. Today it was 5.30, so I just pushed through everything and left it vacant just a little bit so we could do this chat. Yep, great. And how's your wife finding you doing this as well? How's, what is she saying about it? Oh, yeah, what a roller coaster ride. Um, we've been divorced 10 times. 
it's only been two months, so we're going to fill up again in a year and see if you've been going. But no, 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 no. It's, um, we're starting to find routine, and, and I'm a lot happier. So once the once the money stuff was taken care of, like once we were making enough money around that week five, obviously I get, I get anxious. I'm an anxious guy, and um, and I can't switch off work either. So like I was staying up all night and I wasn't making money. I think try to make money that type of thing. But now we're sort of the the money's been taken care of. The systems are good. Like I said, like the gym's jobs, it just takes all the weight off. We've got the zero as well. Yeah. Um, so I've starting to we don't use it though. So like I think a lot of people use it for scheduling or something. I don't know. Mel showed me, which is Dan's wife, showed yep. quickly what to do with Jim's jobs uh online. It was just easy and then the accountant called me literally after that phone call and said this is zero and started taking me through to zero nah, <laughs> no, no i can't do that but yeah so as we as we settled into it things are heaps of dinner yeah that's great and i was gonna say as well with what equipment do you use in your business what did you buy what do you have at the moment i'm on my third mower really already <laughs> i'm busted my bush ranger thanks for the Tip to buy that one, Dan. <laughs> he gave you the Bush Ranger. I thought he was recommending the um. We did a video. He recommended something else. What was it? No, no, no. It was the Lonson Bush Ranger. Okay. Yeah, Lonson engine Bush Ranger, uh, self propelled. I broke the broke the cable on it in my second week. Took it back into the shop, and like it's, it's not really the brand that affected me. It was the dealership. Uh-huh. So they said it was going to be a week for me to come pick it up. So I called them a week later. And they said, oh, we expected you to be in the next day because we fixed it the day that you dropped it in. Great. So I could have had it back that day. But I needed mowing done on the day that it broke. So yeah. I went to another dealer and um, I had this thing like, I want to go battery. So they hooked me up with a battery mower, battery still. And it, it felt like it was really good. And I think that's because the car was shot from battery in the Bush Ranger. But I didn't know the difference. Like my Bush Ranger just wasn't carbon good. It was, it was looking terrible. It was just clogging up and whatnot. So I got this still one. I thought, oh, this still one's so good. Got a Bush Ranger back, broke it again. I think the car be seized on it or something. It's still in the shop. So then I went, oh, I'm just going to get the proper stuff, which is the HRU 2 under. Yep. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get go out, spend the 17, 1800 bucks, get the proper stuff from the state. The still dealership does that. And we had a really good rapport through the hand equipment that I've got. That, they're just really nice guys. Like I spoke to them today and they're dressing up a deal. Um, Cox, Cox right on. Yeah. Uh, well, we've got, I've got, I'm looking at Toro, Gravely, yep. Hart, Hart and Cox. And I think I'm leaning towards Cox, but they love me in there because I just tell them, you pick what I'm going to buy. <laughs> so they're, they're the deal. It's like, I buy my oil there, buy my, like, and that's what you told us at training. We've yeah. told Maybe not sell it, but we were told at training, you know, buy your stuff from your local dealer because they'll love you. Like buy all that stuff, like buy your blades. There. It may cost us a little bit more in the long run, but they know when I come into the shop, let's get this guy going. Uh, and it happened with my hedger. My hedgers, the carby seized or something. I'm not a mechanic. I don't know. The carby was stuffed. I took it in there and I said, mate, I've got three hedges to do tomorrow. So they came in early the next morning to fix it so that I can keep going. Do you do your own maintenance or I'll do that? Because I could see by learning. Because we've got one of our mowing franchisees, Matt Sheldon, owns Shep City Equipment now. So he's bought a mower shop as well. He's got his mowing franchise still, but bought the mower shop down there. And if you ever need advice, any mowing franchisee can call him up. And I think he's got some sort of special as well for his online shop. Yeah. But yeah, he was saying that, you know, if you ask them to show you, they should show you. And then hopefully next time you don't have to take it and you can save on that maintenance cost from that. If you, have you, have you ever, do you do your own maintenance or have you ever asked about that sort of stuff or? Oh, I'm keep breaking machines. I've got brand new machines every week. So. <laughs> they, they don't want to show you then. They don't want to show you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, they showed me. So I went back in there to have a chat a bit. Uh, it's always good just going in for a chat if you've got time. Yeah, I think I went to... So I got a job from Jim's and it's a three-acre bow. And I was like, I can't do the three-acre bow on my HRU to two months. <laughs> so I'll go in and talk to the boys, let them know whereabouts it is in town what it looks like, you know, what are my options? I want to be on a stand-on because I want to look cool. Now, I've, I've got steel rods in my back, so I can't sit for too long a period. I'm yep. agitated, so I thought a stand-on would be good. And 
I'm pretty sure a stand on can do three acres of, of grass. It may take me a little bit longer. But yeah, I was in there chatting to them about what to get. Yeah, so that's where they when I went in there, they said, Oh, what are you broken again? So <laughs> I said, How about you guys show me how to maintain my equipment? And maybe I would agree with you. And they did. They took me through like everything, which was really good. And when I bought the steel mower, I was gonna go buy the ego stuff. So I'd already gone out and I I just ego is maybe like an Instagram brand or something. That's how that's what I'm calling it. Anyone who's an influencer is using ego. So yeah. Take it hard on that. I went out and bought like the multi tool and I'd used it on a couple of jobs and then I was thinking, oh, I could get the ego ride on or I was gonna go get the ego push mower when the bush ranger um bugged out, the select cut or whatever it is. But then I thought to myself, like, oh, if I break this stuff, I need a dealer to take it to. And I can't take my ego back to Total Tool. Yeah. Um, or maybe I can. I don't know. But um, I've asked Sydney Tools, which is just open to get the ego rep out of you and maybe do like a, a talk up to, to all of us. But uh, I haven't heard anything back from that. So, yeah. Well, look, it depends on where you are. But like, um, but yeah, the ego, obviously, the guy, the actual marketing manager lives near Jim's office here. So, we are, they're always giving a lot of equipment to our guys to try. And I've got some videos I haven't uploaded yet, but from our trade day actually running where he runs through it. But the whole thing with the old ego and any battery powered gears, you guys want to see it in the field. You actually want to see it going through its paces, not just being shown off in its glory, just looks nice in isolation. You want to see it actually and use the thing and test it. I think that's the main thing with the battery powered stuff. And it is getting better. Like the guys, the, the, there's a couple of brands, but I've got to be brand biased here, but the brand that they you know, Jim sort of really likes is the Plank, which is the orange battery. You would have seen it down here. Yeah. And it has like, just just because it lasts all day in that one battery and the feedback we get is really good from the guys. Like in a city, I guess, is a little bit different or, you know, where we are in the burbs of Melbourne to where maybe you are, but just some guys just run fully on that and they love it and that's how their jobs are. They're small gardens and they can get away with the one battery with the mower and stuff. Whereas if you are, you probably do need a bit more. Um, you know, three, three anchors and stuff, as you said. Milk thistles and like yeah. the weed, and, like it's but <laughs> you got to be able to put it through its paces. Yeah, and uh, something like a Honda and all those other brands is it, perfect for that sort of stuff, and it's going to hold you in good. So it just depends on where you are. You know, you got to have your locate your equipment set up to your location. Yeah, so like out in the bush here, like, and we are we're out in the sticks. Like we're four and a half hours from Sydney, so we're sort of getting out there. You know, I've got four options for my stand up. You know, there's no. You know, there's there's other brands out there, but we just don't have that here. So we have to get we're gonna get like we're not going to get plank out here. You know, we don't have vineyards. So <laughs> true. Yeah, it is a is a French French winery with their other vineyards. So they're probably not good. <laughs> but I was going to say as well, looking back on your journey, first, what would you tell yourself starting again? Would there be what would you do differently starting again if you were to do it? I'd say tell myself to relax, but I think because I didn't relax, that's yeah. why I got success pretty quickly. Like five weeks, that's pretty good. It is. It is. It's a lot happened. Lots happened to you. Yeah. Not turn up. So I mowed my, when I turned up to training, I mowed my lawn the day before to see how my sinus was going. I'm like, I'm just going to test myself. So I mowed the lawn the day before I come down and my sinuses, my throat and all that had clogged up before the training. So for the first three days of training, I couldn't talk. So I'd probably tell myself not to do that. <laughs> I was pretty talkative for the next next three or four days. But hmm. no, advice for starting to get equipment. So my trailer is not suited to me. So okay. Like, like I bought the trailer that was um, that the franchise all told me to buy. And that's, it's fair enough. Like thinking of low cost getting into business. But for me, I like I'd love a dual axle. I've only got a drop down trailer at the back. I'd love yep. to have all the dual, like the side swinging doors as well. The tight spaces, yeah, equipment, hidden costs that we don't think about. So like buying the the little fel- Falcon, I think they're called a Falcon. Falco, yeah, the Falco crew stuff, yeah. So like there's all these little things like that. I didn't think about buying the mowing bags. I didn't think about what buying a ladder. I didn't think about buying the wheelbarrow. And I started getting these jobs. And it's a bit like uh the story from Mo where we got like some on his first day, massive job, yeah. Massive job and had to go out and buy <laughs> Like I'm just accumulating tools every week, just different jobs. So you just accumulate tools. Like it would have been really advantageous, I think, just to know that from the start. But maybe then, if I knew all of that from the start, the the cost of entry, might put you off a bit. Yeah, cost of entry might have put me off. Whereas we can go out, get a job approved, 
and know, you know, within seven days after I bought that wheelbarrow, I'm going to get money for that wheelbarrow. The next time I need one, it's there. So yeah, equipment, equipment was pretty important. I didn't know a lot about that. As I said, I didn't want to go into gyms knowing I was focusing on buying an excavator and what attachments I could get for that. But do, but do you like do you, or do you like the business now? Then I should ask you that. Like obviously, yeah, I'm like the you want to go and make yeah, probably yeah. trust your franchise all because I didn't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pressing him on everything. It's good. Well, That's good. Uh, but I didn't question him along the way. I waited until I boiled up and then questioned him on it. So uh, <laughs> perhaps maybe just have a nice open dialogue with your franchise all from the start. That would well, that's what they're there for. You know, they're there to help you get off to a flying run, and you know, and then. And once you get going, you might not need to contact them as much, but you need, you need to get on to them as much as you can, you know, where you're feeling frustrated or not, because that's the key, because that's what they're there for to do, especially early on. I'm glad to hear that you did, you know, so honest today regarding your discussion about this, because it's been fantastic for you to share that, because as I said, you know, we don't have this all, because you know, it's small business. It's not, it's not easy all the time, you know, Look, give an yeah. example, like who would have thought buying the franchise, we had franchises buy a franchise and then we went into lockdown. Imagine that you buy two, you, get, you buy your business and in two weeks you go into lockdown, right? And then Victoria being where we were. So, you know, it's it's not, you can't predict things. You can't, you know, anticipate things sometimes. There's ups and downs. You just got to keep on going like you have and a credit to you for keeping to do that and to get where you are at the moment, which is fantastic. That's probably a good one. Like just chill out when something goes, <laughs> like when the mower breaks, don't rush in and buy the steel mower. Just chill it. Maybe call your franchise or that happens and find out which mower you should get. But that's the thing though, you're paying for their, you're paying for their mistakes. Like your franchise or on the franchisees are, made mistakes you know and, and you get access to to stop to, to get to what did you do wrong so that i don't do make that mistake and that's the thing what you when you buy into a franchise especially at gyms you've got access to the biggest network you know really for your industry that is there to help you and they've made all mistakes they've done all these different jobs and you know and that you've got to use them and that's that's the key to it the other one too is use that paperwork guarantee yes for sure not so, a lot of people yeah, i didn't use it so I, I was going out and doing the free motors because why I didn't you do it? So why didn't you use it? Like, oh, I don't know. Like it wasn't really given to me on a silver platter. It wasn't explained. Like I, I felt like it wasn't explained to me that well. I went out and did these free motors and then I'm scratching my head like, how do I get paid for this motor? <laughs> and it, it took me, this is the whole boil up thing. It took me four weeks of this happening. And then eventually I, I called Dan and I'm like, mate, I've done free motors. When are you going to pay me? Um, and he basically said, yeah, just send me the details of the... Yeah. Um, of the um, good. And it happened pretty much straight away. And then I was like... And, and it took my wife... My wife was boiling up like, you're not making much. Because this is in the first four weeks where we were struggling. And I focused so much on the marketing, like the letterbox drops. We've done over 4,500 letterbox drops now. I swear to God, if I go out and do a letterbox drop, <laughs> we're going to get, like, even for a couple of hours, we're going to get two clients. So if, if I feel like I've got a slow week, if I go out and letterbox drop, say, 500, that's two clients, which apparently a pretty good strike rate. They reckon about 1,000 to one with letterbox okay. drops. But yeah. like, no, definitely not. And they've got to stew on it for a bit too. So I'll get two immediate ones. And then might have been yesterday I had – no, it was today. Today I had a, someone call back from before I started work, like before I started working on the Monday – I did the letterbox drop. Someone called me today from that letterbox drop. So no one's called me back about flyers when I've handed out flyers. No one. I even okay. I even wrote on the flyers half price mode this week. <laughs> and I wrote it down to the price, even down to twenty dollars. And no one, no one answered wow. flyers. Flyers don't work, or maybe our marketing team needs to have a look at those flyers and they need to be fixed. <laughs> but magnets, oh, magnets work. Yeah, we spend um you know, I've, I have, I've responsible for a lot of gyms, regions now, man, marketing. We spend most of our money on digital just because, you know, you know people want to best mower near me. You want to have an ad in that position or a Google My Business in that in that position ready to be selected. And the key with gyms is you don't have to establish trust in the search results. I already know gyms is you know trusted and they'll hopefully click on us more. So Facebook pages and Facebook ads is another one as well. But um, that's great to hear about the magnets. I think it was Matt who said at training, it takes yep. about seven pushes to get a customer. So let's say like, our first push is our uniform. And I, I took this literally. I'm like, okay, how many times can I punch a customer before I knock them out? And I was like, okay, so our uniform, let's say they see my gym's trailer in town. They see another gym's trailer. I put Facebook ads up. I paid Facebook ads just yep. to get a like for my page. That's the fourth push. Let's go to, what, a fifth push 
might be, let's say it's the letterbox drop is our fifth one. And then our, we'll just go to the sixth one is the Google ads. So they've gone, I need a mole, man. They jump on Google. That you know, I think we're one, two, or three. We're like right up the top anyway. Yeah, most of the time we are, yeah. So they go, yep, need a mile, man. They see the gym's mile and they've already seen it five times before, bang, they're sold. It's a bit like me getting sold a franchise. Dan didn't have to sell me the franchise. It was an easy phone call for him because I've been watching his on Facebook, on YouTube. I grew up seeing Jim's mowers out and around. All of that stuff was already there. And then Dan was just number six who knocked me out. It's a great point, Matt, Mitch, where you said it. Yeah, it's like it's an old it's an old marketing thing for like the 30s, but basically is people the numbers always like some people say seven, some people say 10, some people say 12. But it's like, yeah, you're right. It's those touch points where they need to see that trailer in there, or they might see you walking around in a uniform, they see Jibs mowing in the paper, or whatever it is. It's those seven to eight touch points, and then someone's ready. So you've got to keep showing up and being in different positions all the time to be seen. And and you're right, it's it's it's, it's you're spot on. So all those different things as well. It's not just one marketing method which works. You know, we we spend a lot of money on Google, but we do a lot on Facebook. We do we encourage franchisees to do stuff as well in person. So it all works together. And you're spot on. I'm glad glad you brought that up because that's 100 percent correct. I'll tell you another another touch. Just be a nice guy. So yes, I, was, good. I went into a um a gated community to do a month. Yep. We don't have a lot of them here. It's, I don't know whether you have them in the city where you know there's a you have to enter a code in and and you go in and it's a Jim's head office is sort of like that. The, the gold compound when you came in, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, it does like that. Yeah. And um, I went to the gated community and I seen these two ladies struggling with a couch. That and they'll take. There was a council cleaner. And they were taking it. I could tell straight away what they were doing. They're taking it out the front, which is about 150, maybe even close to 200 metres out the front to get that couch out the front for the council to pick it up in the cleanup. So I pulled up. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing? You're not going to walk it out the front. So I unloaded my trailer. I had a couple of green waste bags in there. I think I had two mowers in there, a ladder and a wheelbarrow, which is a pretty tight fit. I Got all that out, put the lounge in the back, drove out the front, sat it on the, the curbside and then came back in, just gave him a wave on the way back past and when I did my mow. And then two weeks, must be about two weeks later, they've called Jim's and said that they need a cleanup because the couch wasn't picked up in the council cleanup. So I actually turned that into a, like, that was a job. I got paid for that. Yeah. But like it's a great point, and I'm um, like you an example. We film with franchisees, and we go out, we go out and about, and we film with a lot of the mowing guys. And every time I be the mowing guy, anyone who walks by, and yeah, like I was sorry for interrupting. He's like, no, no, it's all right. You know, walk on by and has a big smile. Then there's always they always someone who goes, oh, the guy live around the corner. Can you just come and give me a quote? Just from that franchisee engaging with them and smiling and being nice and professional. I reckon every second or third person I've seen on the street when we do filming, ask the franchisee for their card. Well, can you quote me on this? It's happened multiple times, so it's such a good point about just being, being, being smile, smiling, being presentable, being friendly, and when you're in the gym's brand, you know there's so much opportunity with that brand because everyone, you don't, when they see that, you don't have to establish, you know, that the credibility and reliability. You're leveraging off all these jobs over decades that go into building that. So when you're buying in 2023, you're buying, you know, we've got I think it's 650 thousand jobs taken last in 2022, right? So 650 thousand leads taken. And, you know, and our complaint rate, I think it's like 0.07 or 0.7% or whatever it is, right? So it's really, really low. So 99% of customers are having a great experience with gyms and you just benefit from that. And that brand just gets all that goodwill every single year fed into it. And um, it's such an important point. You know, we always go on about online stuff and this and that, but just in, there's so much stuff in person. Like you just said, those opportunities that franchisees can take. And then you just don't know who that person is, what they own, what you can do for them. There's so many opportunities that come from that. I remember John Wilde saying to me one, there was some guy, I can't remember some random job and it was a rush job and the guy needed him to come out there and he did it for the guy and he dropped his price for it. But the guy who he owned seven factories or something, right? And then out of that, he's been doing his commercial properties for like, you know, four or five years just from that one thing, just from being a good person and dropping it. That's that's the dream. <laughs> yeah, it is the dream if you can get it. But that's but you got to be in that position to do that. You know, you got to make sure you're always on, on you know, when you're in the gym's uniform, you know, always on. So, on call so I, got, I got one to touch, touch on that as well. So after I complained or whinged, had my little tantrum, we'll call it, um, about the pay for work guarantee, I realized that I had this power now. I'm like, pay for work guarantee. I still got this <laughs> nervous, like upset energy in me. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make Dan pay this out. Look, I'm going to make him pay it out. Well, I'm going to mow a lot of free mows. So I went out that morning, knocked on, knocked on, first door I knocked on, I got a free mow. Spoke to the guy across the road, got a free mow. And I was like, this is this is so easy. So then I tried to knock the rest of the street and no one had answered. I drove to the next street over, no one answered, drove to the next street over, no one had answered. I thought, I can't reach enough people. Like this is, I would be better off dropping off magnets instead of looking for free mugs. How am I going to reach everyone? So I posted on the Dubbo community page yeah. uh, something about, and I think we're not allowed to post that we're with gyms or something like that. Well, it's yeah, I think it's a little bit changing now. Like um, I think with this stuff, like dog wash and stuff, do it. If you do post it with gyms, it's always one three one five four six, or you know, send me a PM. That's yeah. what you can do. Or send me a DM. And most people will DM you. That's what happens. Yeah. So I was just directing people. I wanted to direct people to my Jim's Mine Brocklehurst page. Yep. I think that's the first time I mentioned my business name there. But Jim's yeah, Mine Brocklehurst. And how'd you go out? How'd you go with that that community sort of post? Um, so that one got taken down because I'm not allowed to promote my business. Some groups are like that. So that's what you can do. There's heaps of groups you can probably join, I reckon, for that. But and yes. I used your chat GBT. So just the free version too. And just mucked around with creating a post. And you see the guys that do the free mows on Facebook, like the, I think it's Tim and Nathan. Yeah, Tim and Nathan do a fantastic job, yeah. They do really good. And you can see that it's coming from like the bottom of their gut. Like yeah, they're good not likes. doing it for likes or, or whatever. So I thought, oh, yeah, I want to approach it that way. And so I created like a – it was quite a big thing, but it was just the heading of it. And I put it in the buy, swap, and sell. Free mow, $0. Then it was, hey, I like just want to uh, do a free mo. I've got I've got some spots available at the end of the week. Want to do some free mo's for those in need. So it was that type of, um, and basically inbox me your story, the reasons why that you need a mo, etc. And I'll keep it completely anonymous and go empty mo. I did four. I had had about four hours free at the end of the week, basically, and it was my son's birthday, and I was out doing free mo's, and I got in trouble. Doing free mows on his first birthday <laughs> until about seven o'clock. I couldn't actually get, no, I did five. I couldn't complete the fifth one and had to go back Monday morning. I said, I'll just knock out your front yard and then I'll do the back. And this was two people that they were both on kidney dialysis and both been given how long they have, I think it was, oh, wow. and how long they've, they've got left in, in life. So that was the type of people. That I was going out to mow, but one of them was just a young girl who had moved out of home and didn't have a mower yet. I was like, yeah, okay, everyone needs help. I'll go do that. I got 180 likes on that Facebook post, something like that. I'm still getting work from that post. Uh, I've got three, reg- maybe four regulars now from that post because people contact me and just say, what a nice dude, come and mow my lawn. And then someone from the Aboriginal housing community got in contact with me and said that they do big cleanups when people leave the, the housing. And he said, oh, it's usually like five to $10,000 per job. We've got 200 spots. Next time we get one, we're going to give you a call uh, just because you're a nice dude. So, um, more you, so look, you get, more you put, like if you put out that sort of stuff, you get more generally back and that's what people need to remember. It felt good to do it too. Yeah. And then I was like, hey, Dan, pay me my flight. <laughs> Plus pay me the paperwork, yeah. <laughs> now I've got regulars from it too. So yeah. I got paid for doing this work and I got regulars from it as well. Not regulars from the uh, – actually, one of the ladies I did a free mode for, she was a single mother uh, just getting back into the workforce. So I went around, did the free mode for a big cleanup, and now she's a two-weekly regular. That was really good. Um, I'm working on – or I've been playing around in my head because um, we don't have a lot of time, obviously, to sit down and, and do our paperwork and stuff like that. But we've got a lot of time to think when we're out mowing. Um, I'm pretty busy now, so I could probably do one free mow, I think. So I'm I'm wondering how I'm going to post that on on Facebook. And one free mow, like whatever, that's that's nothing. That's not giving back to the community. So I was thinking of like doing it like a cost of living mow. So go out and do a free mow for like a family of like three or four children, something like that. Maybe the yep. cost of living is getting a bit hard for them, and then just add two hundred dollars worth of groceries or something. Yeah, it'd be awesome. So that's yeah, that's probably what yeah. I'm going to do. So I know you know, it's not for marketing, but take you should take a photo or something like that because we love that sort of stuff. I know a few franchisees like Mo and a few others do that in their community, and I think Mo was on Nova FM, which is a radio station down here, about doing similar things. So please do it. It's a great thing to do, and I've yeah, it's really goodwill. 
I sent Dan the photo of the initial post that I got a really good response on. I think he has shown some other franchisees like, hey, like if you're struggling for work, you're on the paperwork guarantee. Like, well, send it to me. That'd be great because I do um I do a lot of video tutorials on this sort of stuff. So if you can send me an actual post which you've done, I'll yes, use it in my training. That'd be good. But forward that through to me. I'll definitely um show that to people because we do we are starting to go this route because economy people are a bit more scared and stuff. So we've got to find other avenues of work. And community groups are a really really good one as well. And um good little trick as well. What people can do. I show it in training now. Is we've actually had some franchisees. So I'm in my local groups in my area, and I all of a sudden see a bloody some random person posting the card of the gym's car detailing guy with his mobile number in there and saying, you know, hey, just use this guy Jay from car detailing, really, really good operator. And then all of a sudden he's got, you know, like six or five people saying, oh, I've sent a PM, sent a PM. So his customers posted his business card in the group, giving him a referral in this four or five thousand person group. Like little things like that, they're so really, they're so powerful. And those things you just said then are absolutely fantastic. And really, we want to see more franchisees doing that type of thing. Yeah, my customers spray my name on Facebook all the time. <laughs> it's pretty good. Like, I, like if you if you actually do a decent job and care about, like, bring the bins in for them. And like when you blow down, you've got the blower, you, like you've already pulled the cord, you've got the blower going. Just walk around their decking and everything. Just blow everything up. Blow all the cold. It's a great point. Just do it all. It takes two seconds. Two seconds. Great point. Yeah, I remember I went out for a video of Chris Sullivan and he said exactly the same thing. Was at a house and he did exactly the same thing. He said blow the deck and do all these other things as well. And it goes a little little bit, but it goes a long way. I fixed someone's gate the other day. Um, now, I think Dan came to town and I met all the other the franchisees. We went out for dinner and a couple of beers. Cool. And one of them had said, the the gate latch was broken on a mow that he did and he fixed it, didn't tell them that he fixed it and later got a text message from them. And I was like, you know what, I've got a, I've got a customer with a broken gate. <laughs> so I took the drill there the next time, fixed the gate, didn't tell him about it, get a text message saying thanks for the gate. And she's a really good customer. I mean, look, good, good value. It's a two-weekly mow uh, yeah. and just those little things like that. That's great. It's a big, it's a little thing. It's a big difference though. It can be people notice these things as well, you know, especially in our cleaning division, you know, these sorts of things as well. They do all these little extra things internally and people just, they do notice and appreciate it as well. So we've gone for more than an hour and 10 minutes, Mitch. So thank you very much. Is there, any, is there anything else you want to share before I let you go? I know you listen to a lot of podcasts, so you're going to listen to yourself back in the field now. You can, I don't, I don't yeah, want there to be yeah. anything. So I should have said this. So is there anything you should have, you feel as though you wanted to say or you, I didn't I ask you? I could babble on for another hour. <laughs> you put another, another man on the podcast too, mate, and we'll just talk forever. We'll have to. We'll have to get you on interviewing someone else or maybe you guys can have a chat and we'll put it up as an episode. Yeah, copy. That'd be good. Yeah, um, if you do that, please do it. Yeah, That'd be like, great. If anyone's out there struggling, yeah, use that paperwork guarantee. Yeah, talk to your franchise or what you can do. Um, you will get through it. Like, man, like if I can get through it on 5.2 leads a week, like, because I heard a story, your mate who got like 20 leads on his first day, you know, you had someone working with you and he went out mowing. Oh, Greg. Yeah. yeah he got 20 leads on his first day. When he yeah, something, something ridiculous. That, yeah. That's wild. So sometimes it's going to be like that. Sometimes it's going to be the 5.2, but the, that pressured me and it's brand recognition too. Like when I say that I went out and got the leads myself, like when I'm throwing a gym's magnet at someone, they're not like, <laughs> you know, I've gone out there. So some of the customers as well that I've gone out and spoken to, they say that they wanted me there because they wanted a professional. They wanted someone who was in short. They wanted police check, which is a real big thing out in the bush. So you don't want someone who's so – I speak to an independent contractor. He threw me a job this uh, last week, actually, or maybe this week. He told me I couldn't convert her into a regular, but, mate, I did a good job on her place. If she's not a regular by the end of the week. Anyway, but um, he told me he employed someone. And to, to go out, he went out to his regular customers and did two weeks worth of mowing with this bloke. And he scoped every house and went back and thieved so much stuff. So, like, that that hurt his brand. But we're police checked. You're not going to have that. So, yeah, so that brand recognition, when I throw a magnet at someone, like, um, and the shirt and stuff, if I'm walking around the street, like, I got pulled up down the street. I was just wearing the gyms. And he's like, mate, I need a mow. Like, he can see my mum. Wear your gym shirt and wear like I yeah. go, there's a coffee shop here that's a nursery. So and they know everything. So I go in there for so much knowledge. You can go in and ask anyone. All my landscaping work, I just go and ask them because they're landscapers. Hey, what should I do? Here's mm. the photos of my job. Tell me how to do it. I'll buy your stuff. Like 
just that's that net networking, whatever you want to call it. But um, yeah, look, brand recognition. Just stick with it if you're yeah if you're in that roller coaster stage. It'll pan out. If I can do well, it. we'll have to check back in six months or a year, Mitch, and see where you're at. But um, now thank you very much for your time tonight after a big week and um, really a lot of great honesty, which is fantastic to hear. And we don't edit anything so that people will hear this in full. So I'm sure anyone researching us and doing what you did um, will appreciate the honesty of your conversation as well. And great to hear some really good practical advice and just some simple advice to them, which is basically you'll get through it, which is the main thing just to keep going forward. And you like know. We're, we're a single income household like, yeah. and there are people like that. By the time we bought the franchise and the tools and stuff, there wasn't that much money left in the account. But yeah, the process, paperwork guarantee, call your franchise or walk, and just market like hell. Great advice. Thanks, Mitch. We we'll appreciate it, mate. Thanks for your time. Bobby, thanks, mate. Thanks, Mitch. No worries, mate. I'll ski you the voucher as well. And um, yeah, we'll put this up in full and hopefully in a couple of weeks it'll be online. You'll see yourself and you will watch yourself. What's, work for what's a course. I've got some mates that still work for a course. So. Um, I'll go see. Ah, right. Yeah. So we'll get it, you'll get it in five or six days. And yeah, you can use it at any a core hotel and you get 50% of dining at any or call joint as well. So it's actually really good. I use it in Tassie, actually. So it does does work and it's around 600 bucks worth. So it's good. No, it's lovely to meet you as well. And I'm glad to hear um, everything's going well. And make sure, you know, if you do need anything, reach out to Jim and Dan and don't and even call Jim sometimes, you know. He like he prefers email, but if you ever need a chat as well, Jim's available to chat as well. Very good. No worries. Thanks, Mitch, mate. Appreciate your time. Well, mate. Well, no, well. see you, mate. Bye. Thank you for listening to the episode of the More Than Just Mowing podcast by James Mowing. If you do need help with your local gardening expert, please give us a call at 131 546 for Australia, 0800 454 654 for New Zealand, or head to jimsmowing.com.au or jimsmowing.co.nz. If you liked what you heard, please make sure you leave us a review as well. Wherever you consume your podcast, we appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.